right, I'm here to talk to you about technology, very different from some of the other topics. And my goal is to convince you that there is some madness in saying Sri Lanka should and can be a technology leader in the world, but that is actually possible. All right. So let me start off with a little story first. So this is, I think, about 2015, 16. I was in a, um, uh, I had, uh, we had some business in India, and I was in the Delhi airport waiting to fly back at the airport, and I was, uh, you know, where the Sri Lankan flights come back. And then some guy was walking by, saw me, turned around and walked up to me and said, Jai Surya! It's like, it's like, no, 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 I'm not Sanat Jai Surya, right? So, I mean, apparently there's some resemblance, but... Um, so he said, no, you, you are Jai Surya. I said, no, 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 I'm not. Then he said, but you look like Jai Surya. Well, okay, maybe. This, then, then he goes on to saying, can I take a picture with you? So he sits next to me and the guy and the person I was with uh, took a picture so he could send, tell his friends that he met Jaya Surya. So, uh, the, the, point, the point of this story is, what's going on? Why is Jaya Surya uh, so special? And Sri Lanka cricket, really, across the board, so special. So what you see on, on the left side uh, are the, the ICC World Cup tournament records, and the right side is the T20, T20 records. And you can see that we've been, we've been you know, we came to the top twice, one on each side, right? And we were the, the mayor of honor twice on each side as well. So we are, we are special because it's not just a one-hit wonder. It wasn't just Ayasuria, right? Over the years, we've done many, many things that have brought us to being one of the major players in cricket. So the madness there is not the fact that... The, the, the madness here is that how is it that just a tiny country with 22 million people can have such an impact on a country with 1.5 billion people. And in fact, the cricketing world is more than half the world, right? And we have such a massive impact on that. And that's the, that, that's the real impact that we've had. So to really understand what's there and what it implies for technology, let me, let me explain one concept to you. This is a concept called finite versus infinite games. So finite means one cricket match, right? You start. There's a time, somebody plays, somebody else plays, maybe somebody plays, somebody else plays, whatever, and there's usually a winner declared at the end of it, right? So there's a beginning, middle, and end, and the story is written, it's done, it's over. Infinite means there's no winner, there's no final winner, and you just keep on playing forever. So if you take cricket in Sri Lanka as an example, or Sri Lanka cricket, or our cricket team, there's no goal to say we must win and win and win, Okay, we would like that, but it doesn't happen all the time, right? That's not the way it works. Some people win, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But the goal is to be in the league the whole time. We are one of the few countries in the world that are able to compete at that level consistently. And that's the, the idea of an infinite game, which is that you don't play just to win one game. You play to play in the league, to be, keep on playing. Like when you have a company, if you have a company that is there for short term, Okay, you just had to win that match and you're done. But take Sri Lanka as a country. The country has no end date, there's no expiry date, there's no you know, eat by date, right? You just keep on going. So that's an infinite game. So there's no need to win in a particular time, but what there is a need is to keep on playing, keep on playing the game, keep on fighting the fight, keep on doing the good work and so on. So how did we get here in cricket? The picture here is, is some random picture I picked off the internet and is correctly attributed. So, it, what this picture is showing is people playing cricket on the beach. Right? And in fact, one of our most famous cricketers came from this style of playing cricket, right? Lasith Malinga was a beach bowler. That's how we learned that style of bowling because that was the only way to make the ball bounce on the sandy beach. And the cricket is played everywhere. You know, when I was growing up, we played cricket. There was nothing else to do. I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not one of these, my generations are not named, right? I came before Gen A, B, C, D, all this stuff. And at that time, uh, the only thing you could do when you came home from school is, you know, go out and fight with somebody or throw a ball or kick a ball or hit something. That was it. So we all played something. Whenever there was a chance, you play. So everybody in Sri Lanka played cricket. So the two factors that have made Sri Lanka able to compete and win and consistently keep playing in the global stage in cricket is the fact that A, everybody can play cricket. Eh, yeah, some of us are better than the others, right? 
and the fact that there's a system that helps identify and bring the best of those people out to the top. There are many, many cricketers in Sri Lanka who played amazing cricket. It's not just Sanat Jayasuri. We have Kumar Sangakkara, we have Mahela, we have Morali, we have Dilshan, we have uh, Malinga, and so on. So many different people who over the years have played at that level, and many of them have been discovered through this method of saying, hey, somebody's really good, let's give the guy a chance. So the, the, the madness there is really to think that in any given number of people, when you get beyond a certain size, that you cannot find 11 people. They can beat another 11 people from somewhere else. Right? People in India, there are a lot more people to choose 11 people from in India. Right? There's a lot more people in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in UK, Australia, we are about the same. New Zealand, they're far less, right? There are more sheep in New Zealand than there are people who can play cricket. But they can still find 11 people who can kind of play cricket. So the madness is not understanding that when you have a certain minimum viable size, you can compete in anything. So Maldives, okay, 300,000 people. Tonga, 100,000 people. Maybe they'll find it difficult to find 11 world-class cricket players. But our size is more than enough, and same with so many other countries. So that is the key point that, that's very important to keep in mind. When you are working on something, if you have a focused effort on something, finding a small group of people that want to build that and be at the top of the world, if you keep on playing at it forever, is perfectly possible. Now let's switch back to technology, the thing I do know something about, not, not cricket. Why are we not there in technology, right? You know, pe people who are in technology world uh, might do understand why, uh, do know that we are not there. People who are not outside might think because of all the hype and all the digital this, digital that, AI, blah, 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 that we are also in the same league as other people. And, and governments come, governments go, everybody makes all kinds of claims, but we are not getting there. Why are we not getting there? What is the problem? So first is, where are we? as a country. So right now we have, we have about $1.5 billion in exports in, in IT industry in Sri Lanka. And about 90% of that is services. Services means we do the work somebody else wants us to do. So it's outsourcing, it's business process, outsourcing various forms of work. Somebody says, hey, I want this done. And somebody in Sri Lanka says, sure, I can do that. And you pay me this amount and I go and do it. And and of course, remember, I want something done. There are people all over the world who can do it now, right? Not just in Sri Lanka. There are people in India, there are people in Philippines, there are people in Ukraine, there are people in Russia, there are people wherever that can do that work. So it's a price competitive aspect as well. So as a country, we have unfortunately got into a path where we are competing for services against many, many other countries who are also equally capable and interested in doing services. We, the, the company I started has an office in South America. We have customers in North America. So in South America, there are a lot of people who work doing services for North America. Why? Because it's almost the same time zone, right? So the problem we have working with North America from here doesn't exist there. So it's, it's a challenging environment to find differentiation. <clears throat> And, and we are also competing, so not only in every country, but it's also volume business. So we can't compete with India, even though, I'm sure most of you don't know, that as a percentage of the population, there are more people in Sri Lanka working in the IT industry than India, as a percentage of the population, not in absolute terms. Right? So if you really want to do well in IT, that means all of you guys have to become programmers. This is not good. That's not the right thing for the world. Everybody shouldn't do that. Where real value is created in IT, in information technology, is not with services, but with products. Now, I put some random logos here. Some of them you will recognize, some of them you won't recognize. But the, all of these have had dramatic impact on the world. And they have been started from nothing. Every one of them started from nothing. Apple, Facebook, PayPal are ones that you will instantly recognize, right? But if you go back and see how did they start, they started with a small group of people. And that group of people having some idea, some purpose, some direction, some vision, some energy, and saying, we're going to take on everybody and go do that better, better than anybody else in the world. And that's, what, that, that's the point that I want to get across, that this is what it takes to build products. Right? 
So the small, passionate teams are the ones that build great products. Recently, there was an interview with this guy called Johnny Ive. If you know, uh, Johnny Ive was one of the, the, the people credited with, with designing the iPhone, and the, one of the main, the, he was a design lead with Apple, in Apple working with Steve Jobs. And it, it was a really great interview, and it's worth watching. And one of the comments he makes is about the, the, for people to make a great product, whether it is this clicker, or the stand I'm on, or the TVs here, or the speakers we're listening to, or the video screens, to create a great product, you need to have a lot of care you need to be very passionate, you need to be committed. That is critical to, being a make, to, to make a great product, where you need to understand the person on the other side. And of course, this is what comes to entrepreneurs and, and startups. So I have a very simple definition of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are people who, when they see some problem, and we all see problems all the time, in my view is when you see some problems, you have one of three things you can do. One is complain about it, and we all do that, right? Oh gosh, look at that, it's terrible. Right? Second one is after a while gets tired of complaining, so you start ignoring it. That's quite easy. Your brain is very good at tuning out stuff that you can't be paying attention to all the time. So you just ignore it. The third one is saying, you know what, that's a problem. That's not a problem, that's an opportunity. Let me go figure out how to solve that problem. How do I build the necessary capabilities and go solve that problem? Those are the people who go do startups. So when you do a startup, you have these three different things that you need to do. One is, first is you must have some care, some passion some motivation, some need, some desire, some drive, something to get up in the morning, something not to sleep, to say, I want to fix this problem. The second part is, you don't need to have know what you're doing. You can't solve hard problems without understanding the complexity of the underlying technology, the research, the science, the art, the, the people, everything that you need to put together. So you need to put that thing together, so you need to learn, constantly learn, learn deep. Right? The third is, these things are infinite games. Solving a hard problem is not done in one year, in six months, and then you're done. It doesn't finish. You make a product, you make it work, then you iterate. How many iPhones have there been now? Right? We're on 16, 17, I don't know, something like that. A lot of it. Each time, it's an iteration, and they are competing with many others, so constant iteration. Same thing with a vehicle, same thing with a, with a pair of shoes, every single thing. Product innovation, is constant and permanent. So you got to keep on going at it. You never stop. Right? So my thesis is that it is absolutely not madness that we can build great products, that Sri Lanka as a country can build great products. There are enough people in Sri Lanka that can build great products. The, the catch is every country can do this. Right? There is nothing, it's like cricket. Why, doesn't, why is it that Bangladesh, which is much poorer than Sri Lanka, you know, it took them a little bit longer, but their cricket team is now world class, right? Pakistan, economically much poorer than Sri Lanka, but much larger, 180 million people, if I remember right, has a fantastic cricket team. Afghanistan, war ravaged for many, many, many decades, way longer than ours and far worse than ours, now has a credible cricket team. So, so if you have enough, enough people, enough commitment, enough hard work, you can find a team that can put it together. So my ask for you, if you want to do this, there is a set of things that you can do. And the next generation, the people who are in this audience, the people who are looking at what can I do, how do I move this needle forward, not be another service provider, not be happy saying, just give me some work, I'll do the work, get paid for it, I'm happy. That's not enough. If you want to change the needle, for a country like Sri Lanka, that's absolutely not enough. You need to do something to produce value for a lot of other people. So the first step is, of course, you need to give a damn. Learn to give a damn. A lot of people are used to complaining about problems or ignoring problems. Okay? That's much easier than caring about a problem. Because when you care about a problem, it doesn't go. It just sticks in the back of your mind. You're constantly thinking about it. You're constantly asking, what can I do? What is the right way to solve this problem? Who do I go and talk to? How do I encourage other people to join to solve this problem? That's learning to give a damn. That is very, very critical. And that's a, that's a style, that's a mental responsibility that is more difficult than just saying, oh, I'll just keep on doing whatever I'm doing. Right? And so it requires some more discipline, some more commitment to do that. <clears throat> um, the second one is that in order to solve problems, you need to understand science, you need to understand technology, you need to understand art, whatever the tools that you need. You need to understand them not in a shallow way, 
but in depth. Because you're now competing with everybody else in the world. No Sri Lankan cricket team member, as an individual, is in any way, shape or form second class to any cricket team member anywhere in the world. Right? Our guys go play in IPL, they play in UK clubs in Australia, we are in our national team, we beat other people, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. That's the way it is. But they're not second class. So whether it's technical skill of playing cricket, whether it is the methodology, whether it's the discipline, whether it's the physical fitness, the mental fitness, they are equal, if not better than anybody else in the world. That's the same level you need to come to if you're going to go build a product that you're going to go sell to everybody else in the world. Because if you, are, if you are lazy to do that, somebody else will not be lazy. They will burn more midnight oil and go pick it up deeper. So you have to do that if you want to get to that point. Right? The third part is that it's, a, um, a, it, it's really a community effort. When you start to do something large, it is not something you can do by yourself. If you want to change the world, you need to carry a bunch of people with you. You do need to build a network. Right? You know this old line, it takes a village to raise a child. It does take a village to do something that has an impact on a very broad footprint in the world. It cannot be done by just one person screaming about it. Yeah, there's all this AI stuff now. There are all these theories that you know, smaller companies can have incredible value. That is true. AI can be used for doing various amazing things. But you still need to bring a team of people to make a next Apple, to make the next Microsoft, to make the next Boeing, to make the next Facebook or the next PayPal or next many of these companies. That is not going to be done by one person, two people, five people. You need to learn to bring the other people together and put them together and give them the right incentives, the right support to deliver that value. Right? So that means if you are a startup, you must make them a shareholder in the company. I'm pointing that out explicitly because there are many startups in Sri Lanka that think that, oh, I'm a startup, I, I, I own everything, but you guys work for me, but hey, we are going to change the world. That's absolute garbage. That's not how it works. Right? The third part is that it is going to be very, very hard. Everybody will say you can't do it. Any single project, whether it is Steve Jobs and Apple, or Microsoft, or any one of these places, or many of the startups from Sri Lanka that have done this kind of work, there are more people to say, heck, no, this is not going to work. They laugh at you. They'll challenge you. They'll say, this is impossible. This is you know, 100 reasons why you can't do this but you got to just keep fighting and fighting and keep going, right? And while you're doing this, you got to remember, we are in an infinite game, and in an infinite game, there is no destination. It's just a journey. Thank you. <laughs>